at the end of the previous video, I say this. What about those Russian planes with vector trust and super maneuverability? Hello everyone, welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. First, what is Vector Trust? Vector Trust is an aerospace technology that today is pretty mature. It is really commonplace in rockets, particularly space rockets, but it is less used on planes. It was not invented in Russia, as some people think. It has originated in the uh, United States in studies that go back to the, to the 60s. Uh, however, uh, more recently, from the late 90s, Russia has uh, implemented this technology in most of uh, its military planes, its fighters. Most of the newest Russian fighters today have vector thrust. In very simple term, vector thrust means that the nozzle of the engine, of the jet engine, can be oriented toward a direction which is not the axis of the engine itself or the axis of the plane. It means that the nozzle is mobile. The F-22 implements vector thrust, but just on the vertical plane. Russian planes implement vector thrust on 360 degrees, and the max deviation is in the region of 15-20 degrees from the axis. So why in the United States is not common, while in Russia it is? Well, there is a doctrinal difference probably at the root of that. In the United States, the accepted version is that vector trust doesn't give you a real advantage. The reason for this is that Western doctrine puts the emphasis on the conservation of energy and long-range fight rather than dogfight. The Russians, on the contrary, believe that dogfight is still actual. They do have long-range weapons, their fighters are equipped with very long range missiles, sometimes exceeding uh, the same Western weapons, but they also believe that it is essential to keep fighting at short distances. This narrative is what everybody is saying. I'm not saying it is wrong, but I believe there is more. We have seen that the Kalman filter, but every any other type of filter for what matters, tries to make a prediction of the target position. This prediction is based on the laws of motion. In a sophisticated Kalman filter, one element, one important element of the prediction is the acceleration. Mind, it is a vector, because if you are turning with your plane, you are basically accelerating on a lateral plane, not just straight away. So acceleration is a vector. It is a quantity that has a value and a direction. Now, a plane to achieve lateral acceleration normally vectors the lift. That is, it rolls a little bit toward the direction. The lift vector is tilted and start pushing the plane toward um, the side. Then the pilot uh, adjusts the plane attitude in order to stay tangent you know, uh, to the trajectory, because it will be a curved trajectory, you know, since you have a lateral component. So every smoothing filter will expect that the plane will go straight, but at some point will roll, and then will pitch a little bit. By the way, by pitching, you also increase the lift expense of some extra drag and you um, increase the turning speed. Now there is obviously a limit to the maximum turning speed which is normally called corner speed that varies with a lot of parameters but 
from the point of view of the filter, these limits are what dictates the size of the blob of the region uh, where the expected position may be. Now, with vector trust, you do not need to vector the lift anymore. Vectoring the thrust allows you to maneuver the plane and point in the news um, without using the aerodynamic surfaces, uh, but also without rolling first or without pointing the news toward the direction of the turn. In practice, vector thrust may make the plane move in a way that is not well predicted by the filter. Actually, this may disrupt that kind of intersection process that we have discussed in the previous video. And uh, so the filter will have to take a decision and they tend to chase their prediction. This means that the um, plot will be farther and farther from the predicted position and will probably induce track termination. Mind, I'm not saying that this is possible at high speed for every plane. I am just speculating that this is a possible weakness of every uh, track smoothing filter that with vector trust you may be capable of exploiting. Moving from this to actual combat effectiveness is quite a big leap. But we have at least one precedent that makes me think that something like this may actually happen in real combat. When the Harrier, which was a plane with vector thrust, definitely a plane that was capable of not flying like a plane, uh, that created no few issues to high speed and top of the line fighters. Once the problem was known, well, it was no longer a problem. Tactics actually overcome eventual limitations of the systems, but you also have to remember that at the end of the day, the Harrier was a subsonic plane, uh, not particularly powerful, with performances that were well below the fighters even in the 70s or the 80s. It was an easier target from this perspective anyway. Um, Russian planes are capable of using vector thrust in high-speed maneuvers, while in terms of evading missiles, that could have an impact. I'm not saying it doesn't, but that could have an impact. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this explanation. Uh, just let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.